what a contrasting week this has been for me. At the start of the week, I was cruising down the Malibu coast and I saw this tangerine lotus esprit. Beautiful, lightweight and so desirable. And then at the end of the week, I'm driving this, the Electre. What a stark contrast for Lotus. It's electric, it's made in China, not UK. And it's heavy. Lotus, we all know them for their lightweight wonders. Cars that dance through the corners like they're on a mission from the driving gods. But with the Electre, you might think they've thrown the rule book out the window. Weighing in at a hefty 2.5 tons. But don't be too hasty to judge. You see, Lotus are masters of power to weight ratio and they've worked their magic even on the Electre. The batteries do make it a bit of a heavyweight, but it has a power to weight ratio of over 360 PS to a ton. That's more punch than your average heavyweight boxer. That's more punch than the Urus Performante. Now, when it comes to making cars that handle like they've got wings, there are those who talk the talk but struggle to walk the walk. Chevrolet, Hyundai and even Aston Martin have been guilty of it. So when some of these car makers wanted to inject some handling prowess in their flagships, whom did they call? You guessed it right. Lotus, Corvette ZR1, Hyundai Genesis Coupe, even the Aston Martin Vanquish. Even the kid who's playing with Hot Wheels will tell you that when it comes to sports cars, V12 engines are supposed to go in the back. And yet, Lotus took that notion and threw it out of the window. They took a V12 engine, plonked it in the front of the Vanquish and still gave it sports car-like handling dynamics. That's how good they are. So I believe when it comes to batteries creating that perfect skateboard architecture, I would say Lotus is simply playing in their comfort zone. This is the R variant, decked out with the air springs, rear wheel steering and a 48-volt active anti-roam system. It's not just a car, it's a symphony of engineering brilliance orchestrated by the maestros at Lotus. Sounds a bit complex for a Lotus, yeah? But it's all good. You see, the rear axle steering can steer the rear wheels by up to 9 degrees. That's pretty good compared to some of the similar tech that's offered on the other sports cars. It certainly makes this 5.1 meter long SUV feel like a hatchback when you're having to make U-turns in tight spaces. Now, of course, when it comes to handling, it's not a ballet dancer like some of its sports car siblings. You just can't hide all that weight. Let's be real, it is a heavy car. But when you compare it to cars from its own realm, electric vehicles, electric SUVs, then it's certainly far, far better. It can leave the iX, the e-tron and the likes eating dust. There is, of course, sport mode, which will tighten things up, but then again, it's a big electric SUV with a lot of batteries in its belly. So there's only so much that the trickery of new generation electronics can do for it. Of course, it tightens things up, but you can feel that weight when you're pushing the car around bends. It starts squirming and squealing like a teenager at a rock concert. There's minimal body roll. This thing feels like it is on rails. It feels like it's glued to the road. So. That weight doesn't really take away the driving fun. That's the point that I'm trying to drive across. There's near equal weight distribution. There is equal power distribution, front and rear. Like I said, minimal body roll as well. So the handling package is so good, it almost feels as good as the Cayenne Turbo. Almost. Looks like understeer and oversteer are on vacation with the Electra. But the steering could do with a better feel and the brakes should have been less grabby. Get used to this and you realize that the Electre is in the league of the Cayenne Turbo or the Urus and then some and even gets all-wheel drive made possible by a dual motor setup, both of which are standard across the range. Now for the R variant, hold your horses. There are 900, in fact more than 900 horses that this thing puts out. That's more horses than an Arab Sheikh's table. It goes from 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds. That's blisteringly quick. That's very, very fast, even by normal standards. Just to add perspective, a Lamborghini Urus would need about 1,000 horsepower. It needs to be upgraded to about 1,000 horsepower to be able to deliver that kind of acceleration. Of course, it will sound a lot more dramatic doing that, so it is going to excite a lot more people. But then again, getting 1,000 horses out of a fuel-burning engine, 
that's no child's play. But for the Elettre, the acceleration is rapid. Whether it is from standstill or rolling, it's just quick. Blink an eye and you've gone from 80 to 120. Oof. That's fast. That is really fast. And the all-wheel drive ensures that there is superb traction as well. The powertrain also employs a two-step transmission akin to the Porsche Taycan. With the 23-inch wheels, the Elytra looks like a four-door coupe on stilts rather than your typical SUV. These wheels, while undeniably eye-catching, come with a caveat on the less-than-perfect roads we have here in India. You have to maneuver carefully though, cautiously, because you see, Lotus is still trying to find its bearings in our beloved country, so garage time, even for something as basic as wheels and tyres, is going to be a long one. Not everyone is on board with the high-performance philosophy of the Elytra R. While it dishes out performance that can only be described as ludicrous, some may find it lacking the theatrical drama they crave. This is where the base models step in, offering a different flavour of the Elytra experience where range and aesthetic allure take centre stage. Depending on your driving conditions, your whims and fancies, the R version can give you between 350 to 400 kilometers of driving range, which I think for this kind of performance is phenomenal. But if you're okay to settle for a slightly humbler performance, you can get a vehicle that goes a longer distance, the base or the S variants. Every version of the Elytra boasts of a 112 kilowatt hour battery pack under the floor, capable of slurping up electricity at a mind-bending rate of 350 kilowatts. You would expect a Lotus to be all about shedding grams, right? Well, not with the Emira and the Elytra. It's like Geely decided to give Lotus a makeover, a luxurious one. Inside the Elytra, it's a whole different ballgame. Forget your usual functional and bare-bones Lotus interiors. This one's got plushness written all over it. We are talking microfiber, stitched leather, wool blend fabric. They've thrown everything at it. And those machine speaker housings and mill switches? It's like they raided a luxury yacht for parts. Oh wait, or was it Volvo? The dashboard is dominated by this colossal 15.1 inch screen which is powered by Geely's eCar X infotainment system. What I'm interested in is that all this infotainment software that you see is powered by the Unreal Engine, which is why you get this nice slick interface, you get nice animations, you can see the whole car, even if you turn on the turn blinkers, you can see it on the screen itself. So all of that is really nice, it really tickles the geek in me. The fonts are a bit small for my liking and the menus can be a bit of a maze, but once you've cracked the code, it's not rocket science at all. Furthermore, even the air conditioning is controlled using the screen. Of course, you can just increase or drop the temperature using these knurled knobs on the tunnel console. But even to adjust the flow of the air vents, you have to use the screen. Very much like the Taycan. Quite fancy, yeah? They have kept things minimal on the instrumentation front, complemented by a rich, full-color heads-up display. It's like Lotus went from more is less to less is on the screen. But speaking of screens, there are screens in the front and also screens at the back. We'll come to that in a bit. Let's first take a look at the seating. You can squeeze in three at the back. But the one in the spotlight here has two plush buckets with legroom for days and headroom that's surprisingly decent despite the swooping roofline. And you use that screen to adjust them to your liking. The comfort in these seats, both in the front buckets as well as the rear, is so good that I'm not surprised to see the sport touring credentials that this electric vehicle has. And at the same time, you don't really feel being thrown around even with the insane acceleration of this R variant. You're not tossed around as if you are some socks in a tumble dryer. They've also thrown in active noise cancellation which can drop the cabin sound levels by up to 5 decibels to give it that cocooned feeling. It's a plush interior. In fact, I won't be surprised to see this car being chauffeur-driven. It's that level of posh. If you fancy a bit of tech wizardry or you want to be a part of this AI trend and you want to give your chauffeur a break, well, there is the option of the semi-autonomous driving. Not yet fully available in India because, well, it requires a lot of fancy sensors, LiDAR, radar, etc. All of which is available on this car 
but India doesn't allow Lotus to use that just yet. But it is cool tech. You have these LiDAR sensors, these big pieces of hardware just popping out and retracting through different parts of the bodywork. It definitely looks cool, feels like some cool James Bond gadget. And it's a cool conversation starter, as if the design wasn't enough to do that. What you do get though is automated emergency braking complete with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning armed with lane keeping assist and adaptive cruise control with a lane centering feature. The Elytra doesn't just rely on fancy tech under the hood. It's got a platform that's a tech marvel in itself. The electric premium architecture, for example, is like a superhero blend. 47% high strength steel and 43% aluminium. And this platform isn't just a one-hit wonder. It's the birthplace for a whole family. Soon to be joined by a coupe saloon and a smaller SUV. All made in China, of course. Speaking of China, think Volvos. All the new generation Volvos are built there, but loved around the globe. They're pretty safe too. And Lotus, the Electra, they follow suit. They feel just as premium, if not better. And it almost feels like China has gone from manufacturing prowess to crafting prowess. With the Electra, Lotus pulls out plenty of aero magic too. Hidden vents, air channels, active flaps in the bumper. It's a bit of porosity, as they like to call it. The result? A slick 0.26 coefficient of drag, making it extremely slippery against the wind. Maybe not as slick with those 23 inches. They're a bit too needy on our roads. Even the Lotus engineers drop a hint that it's better you drop one size, go to the 22 inches. That will be dynamically better as well. And I can definitely vouch that it will be better on our roads. These ones just give me too many butt-clenching moments while driving on these not-so-poor road conditions. Practicality over flair, anyone? Choosing the right flavour for the Lotus Electra is a bit like crafting your own bespoke suit. Every choice counts. And that leads us to the big question. What exactly are you after in this electrified beast? Now, if it's about basking in the history, the heritage of Lotus's classic sports cars, the Electra may not be your cup of tea. It has taken a detour from that traditional book. But if you are looking for a forward-looking, futuristic SUV, something that's supercharged, pun intended, and one that will put a smile on your face every time you take it out for a spin, whether it's in the city, out on the twisties, out on the highway, well, the Electra could be your golden ticket. It packs a punch in performance, a flair for style, a dose for practicality and engineering that's straight from the wizard's workshop. And get this, it won't break the bank, in relative terms of course. It is surprisingly reasonable compared to its ice rivals. So if you are in the game for the futuristic SUVs, the Electra is pretty enticing. Let us know what do you think. And before signing off, Please, please, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do consider liking and sharing this video with your friends and family. Thank you so much for watching.